the 2017 Hot Wheels Portable Nintendo Switch Backpack. Choose one of your favorite fortune tellers, and I can assure you, not even they would have thought that they would hear that string of words in our lifetime. This device is everything its title implies. A backpack, a portable switch dock, a Hot Wheels product, and a thing whose creator does not deserve basic human rights. This backpack is listed by the FCC as an article of clothing, seeing as you can wear it, and you've probably never heard of it, on the account that it was an absolute failure of a product, and was made with low-quality materials that are already fermenting at just five years of age. Is it useful? Is it needed? Is it kind of hip and fashionable? These are questions that we all ask ourselves on the daily, but today, ask them about this product, and I'll answer. Before we look at its functions and give its features a thorough testing, I want to go over its history and backstory. I think it only polite to preface a public execution of a thing or person by acknowledging that they were doomed to fail from the moment of their conception, and I will give this backpack the same respect. In 2017, the Nintendo Switch existed. This is a fact. Do not argue with me in the comments about it. You'll lose. This same year, developer Milestone began to work on a Hot Wheels racing game to be released on all current-gen consoles within the next several years. Many of you know that game as Hot Wheels Unleashed, which didn't release until 2021, but during this time, the project was codenamed Mario Killer. This codename implied ambitious intent. But mind you, Milestone was a company founded and headquartered in Italy and the offensive Italian stereotype portrayed in Nintendo's hit series Super Mario was causing a cultural stir in the country in 2017. As an attempt to appeal to the more sophisticated, upper-class American consumer, the company began development on the Hot Wheels Backpack Switch Dock Portable Thing as a limited promotional device. They would sell for $980, and only up to 300 would be manufactured at most. The company ended up selling only three. And since rich people only want to buy items that are made after they pay for them, only those three exist. One, I have no idea who bought or where it is now. The second, I also have no idea or clue. And the third one is the one I have here. I won it on eBay from a seller named Sue Ajeter, whose seller page is now deleted. Credit to her for much of the information in this video. Research was very hard to conduct and without Sue's help, and friendship, I would have known nothing about this product, and much like you viewers watching, I would have been more ignorant and dumb on this topic. I won the bidding for around $2,390, but this makes sense due to the rarity of the item, and the shortage of microchips that Hot Wheels uses to manufacture their vehicles. Needless to say, this item was considered a useless flop, and its failure set Mario Killer's production back so far that it didn't even release until 2021. If I can be so bold as to insert my opinion into this historical documentation and forgo my journalistic integrity, the game is pretty slamming. I played it for a fair bit of time and really enjoyed Wildin' on Fools in a literal toaster. Saying that, I definitely have a strong bias towards the game, since they put motorized vehicles in it. Back to the topic at hand, nobody understood the appeal of this luxurious fashion statement. A portable Switch dock does sound cool until you sober up and consider that the Switch itself is portable. And the dock makes it in-portable. Using this thing is the equivalent of drawing a smiley face, hitting undo, and then hitting redo. In the very concept of this item is an oxymoron. A contradiction of itself, if you will. Whoever thought this up might as well have said, let's make a loaf of bread that makes you hungry. If they continued on the train of thought one step further during development, they would have simply manufactured a Nintendo Switch on its own, with a little thong that you can throw around your shoulders for easy carrying. Still, saying that, we can easily dismantle the idea of such a product without pushback, but let's allow the poor thing to defend itself. Saying that, let's begin a walkthrough of the product and test out every inch of its pain. The Hot Wheels Backpack Etc. consists of four major parts. A screen, a robust sound system with red LEDs, a switch dock on the inside, and an encompassing case with a cushion and backpack straps. The screen outputs a resolution of 720p, surprisingly at a 16x9 ratio. It has controls for all the standard functions of a monitor, except for volume controls. Those are located lower down on the system, on the second component, the speakers. 
A man of science might say this is a logical choice of buttons to be featured on this device. But that same man of science has forgotten to account for stupidity and oversight, as these two buttons do literally nothing. In fact, there is a third button located directly to their right that also does nothing at all. At least this one isn't labeled, so we don't know which function it doesn't fulfill. I find this comforting, saying that. Now thankfully, these manufacturers must have noticed that they couldn't adjust the volume with these buttons because there is a different way to do so. The sound system, as you may have noticed, has a volume knob in the center that can be used to adjust, you guessed it, the volume. This is the only way to control the sound system, and seeing as you have no other option for audio output, these useless buttons must be simply for aesthetics and fashion, which I suppose I cannot condemn, seeing as this is an article of clothing at the end of the day. Perhaps consulting a man of science for the reason as to why these buttons are here is where our problems began, and we should have consulted a fashionista instead. On the inside of the backpack, we have a lot of red and a lot of one switch dock featuring a safety clip for when you're playing the switch while wearing the device, which is impossible. You simply slide the console inside, buckle it up, and it stays in place fairly well for being a concept of incompetence. Below this, you will find the controls to power on the dock. Even lower still, you'll find a USB cable for charging and a power brick with no ground. So if you fall into the water while charging this product, you get what you deserve for buying it. The case as a whole has very strong visuals. For how much life experience the people who made this must have had, I will give them credit. Flames looking pretty sick nasty, saying that, although the straps feel sturdy and the cushion cushy, I can't say it sits on a person's back very well. Seeing as it weighs about 10 pounds, there is a bit of sag to this bag. Saying that, everything that does something does it correctly and sometimes quite well even. I gave things a very extensive shindig of a test, playing the exact games you would expect on a Hot Wheels backpack, Smash Brothers, the Switch edition of Overwatch, and Jump Rope Challenge. The latency between the console and the screen is not noticeable, even in a fast-paced game like Smash. And the vivid colors and overall picture was very impressive with the ultra-high-end graphics of Overwatch Switch Edition. As for Jump Rope, the sound system was definitely a high enough quality and volume to get the most out of one of my favorite pastimes. Overall function seems to be very solid. But saying that, this device functioning as it does is the equivalent of a printer being able to print out a piece of paper with an image of a piece of paper. Saying that, I do have a few gripes in terms of the functionality and quality of life. The few gripes that I have are not deal breakers, but will make you go, hmm. No visible USB slots exist to sync controllers to the console, and so corded controllers are completely unusable altogether. The battery seems to last only one hour, but seeing as the Switch itself has a battery, I do suppose that you could simply use that. But that would be normal of you, and wouldn't allow your friends and schoolmates to see you as the moronic dipwad who does have the redeeming quality of disposable income that you are. My other gripe is related to the declining health of this device. For being only five years old, there are noticeable spots of decay and paint wrinkle everywhere. Although some imperfections could be from the previous owner, I have grown to trust Sue as a product owner and it would seem many oddities in quality come from factory such as an odd lip of paint around the screen controls. Many people, especially those with financial ignorance enough to buy this device, may consider this to be poor quality control and perhaps unacceptable for a consumer product. However, if the very existence of a product is so useless and benign to begin with, I can't find it in me to be offended if the execution has only the least bit of effort put into it. After all has been tested and reviewed, I found the most striking takeaway was this. Isn't it ironic that an idea and look that would have been dated in the early 2000s has not only aged poorly, but literally aged poorly? Poetic. It would be the same as if all of Limp Bizkit's music slowly went down in available bitrate as time passed. Two layers 
of poor aging is such a rarity that it must be appreciated in some sense. Saying that, all that I have said thus far being taken into consideration, how does one begin to summarize into words a conclusive description of such a thing as this? Logic is not allowed when we reach this territory of uselessness and tomfoolery. I must betray my logistic way of thinking and resort to my emotions and feelings to begin to even explain my experience and opinion surrounding this pile of pointless fantasies. I think that after reflecting on it and consulting with my therapist, that I have indeed fallen madly in love with the concept, execution, and form of my Hot Wheels backpack. It's as if a beautiful maiden has entered into my life with no brain function and no skill set whatsoever. A complete inability to contribute anything to my life, but wielding such beauty and the voice of an angel, and although all she does is weigh me down, I did pay for her, so... Whatever, this is getting weird. So if you existed in 2017, and were in the market for a product such as this, would I suggest you bought it? If your heart's true desire was nothing, nothing at all, then yes... Well, that is the end of this review, but seeing as some of the aspects of this video do relate to real companies and real products, I am legally required to inform you that this entire video was misinformation. No matter how obvious that might already seem, remember that some people are not as smart as you, and any upside down donkey can waste the time of our judicial system if they see fit, so you've all been tricked, stupid!